What were John F. Kennedy's last words before he was shot by Lee Harvey Oswald? What did Mahatma Gandhi do right before he was approached by a man brandishing a handgun? Keep watching for those answers and more. Civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. was just 39 when he was assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee on April 4, 1968. He was staying at the Lorraine Motel to organize a march for city sanitation workers who were striking over their employer's neglect and abuse. King reportedly told the group, We've got to give ourselves to this struggle until the end. Nothing would be more tragic than to stop at this point in Memphis. We've got to see it through. On the evening of April 4th, King emerged onto the motel's balcony to speak with members of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference who had congregated below. As he stood in front of room 306, a bullet struck his face, causing major injuries to his cheek, jaw, spinal column, and jugular vein. He arrived at the hospital at 6.15 p.m. and was declared dead at 7.05. Dr. Martin Luther King, the apostle of nonviolence in the civil rights movement, has been shot to death in Memphis, Tennessee. The killer was identified as James Earl Ray, a fugitive who'd escaped from Missouri State Penitentiary. Afterwards, Ray fled the scene and embarked on a lengthy trip to London, England, where he was apprehended on July 19th. After pleading guilty, he was sentenced to 99 years in prison. Malcolm X was only 39 when he was shot to death. Like Martin Luther King, Malcolm X was a leading civil rights figure in the 1960s, but he didn't share the same ideas as King about faith, integration, and nonviolence. He even reportedly referred to King as a fool and an Uncle Tom. Malcolm's stance changed in April 1962, when Nation of Islam member Ronald Stokes was shot by police. This led Malcolm to criticize the nation's leader, Elijah Muhammad, for what he thought was the nation's weak and permissive response. Elijah Muhammad, the head of the movement, is the father of eight children by six different teenage girls. Malcolm split with the nation in 1963, which rankled other African-American Muslim groups. He also founded the Organization of Afro-American Unity which signaled a new moderation in his attitude that was more closely aligned with King's vision. Despite his shifting perspective, Malcolm remained a committed Muslim. On February 21, 1965, Malcolm X took to the stage at New York City's Audubon Ballroom. As he greeted the audience, gunmen stormed the area and shot him more than a dozen times. Three members of the Nation of Islam were convicted of the murder, although two of them were eventually exonerated in 2021. The youngest man to ever be elected American president, John F. Kennedy was just 46 when he was assassinated on November 22, 1963. The 35th president was in Dallas, Texas at the time, even though the city was reportedly hostile to him. On the morning and afternoon of the 22nd, he was received with great fanfare by scores of Dallasites lining the streets. As Kennedy's motorcade left Main Street, his passenger, Nellie Connolly, wife of Texas Governor John Connolly, turned to the president and reportedly said, You can't say that Dallas isn't friendly to you today. To which Kennedy replied, No, you certainly can't. Fractions of a second later, a bullet struck paving to the right of the motorcade. A second bullet hit Kennedy's neck, exited his throat, and struck Governor Connolly, seriously injuring him. As Kennedy writhed in pain, a third bullet struck his head, causing fatal injuries. From Dallas, Texas, the flash, apparently official, President Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. The president has been mortally wounded by Lee Harvey Oswald, a 24-year-old communist sympathizer who was positioned in the Texas School Book Depository. He would in turn be assassinated himself just two days later by nightclub owner Jack Ruby. Mohandas Gandhi was 78 when he was assassinated by 37-year-old Hindu nationalist extremist Nataram Gadzi on January 31, 1948. Addressed as the Mahatma, a Sanskrit word meaning great soul, Gandhi's death was met with global mourning from people of all creeds, classes, and nationalities. Among the world's most famous people of the 20th century, Gandhi was a leading figure in securing the Indian Independence Bill which established the independent nations of India and Pakistan on August 15, 1947. Gandhi described Indian independence as the noblest act of the British nation, which underscored his peaceful and magnanimous political activism. 
Gadzi disliked Gandhi's support for Muslims and blamed him for the existence of Pakistan. The two met in the gardens of Birla House, New Delhi. Gandhi is reported to have smiled at Gadzi, who stood just five feet away when he produced a handgun, which he fired three times, hitting Gandhi in the chest, stomach, and groin. Gadzi was detained by police and hanged on November 15, 1949. Former Pakistani Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto was the daughter of another former Prime Minister who was himself executed in 1979 for ordering the assassination of political enemies. The younger Bhutto assumed the leadership of the Pakistan People's Party and led the country between 1988 and 1990, and then again from 1993 to 1996. She was the first democratically elected female leader of a Muslim country. Bhutto's life was marked by resistance and oppression. In the 1970s, she was put under house arrest by the military dictatorship, and she was forced into exile multiple times. She also lost two brothers, one to a suspected poisoning and the other to a gun battle with police. Bhutto's position in Pakistani society became perilously unsafe in the 2000s. During her homecoming parade on October 18, 2007, she narrowly survived a suicide bombing when she ducked behind her armored vehicle. Just over two months later, after addressing a crowd on December 27, she and 27 others were killed in another gun and bomb suicide attack. She was only 54. British politician Joe Cox was just 41 years old when she attended a meeting in Burstall, West Yorkshire on June 16, 2016. As she exited her vehicle, she was attacked by Thomas Mayer, a 53-year-old unemployed gardener. Wielding a dagger and a sawn-off 22 rifle, Mayer shot Cox twice in the head and once in the chest before stabbing her 15 times. During the attack, he reportedly shouted, Britain first, this is for Britain, and keep Britain independent. When police raided his home, they found a trove of books on Nazism, white supremacy, and an assortment of far-right memorabilia. During his court case, the judge said, Our parents' generation made huge sacrifices to defeat those ideas and values in the Second World War. What you did betrays those sacrifices. Cox was the first member of parliament to be assassinated since Ian Gow, who was murdered by the Irish Republican Army in 1990. Tragically, another MP, Sir David Amos, would be murdered just over five years later, on October 15, 2021. He was the ninth British parliamentarian to be killed in the nation's history. Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin was 73 when he was killed by Jewish extremist Egal Amir on November 4, 1995. Rabin won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1994 for his negotiation of the Oslo Accords, which determined that Israel would withdraw from occupied territories and grant self-determination to the Palestinian population. At the time, the Oslo Accords seemed like a step in the right direction, but the Israeli opposition to Rabin was enraged by the deal, and Amir's act of violence reversed the painstaking efforts to achieve peace. As Yassi Klein wrote in the Jewish newspaper Haaretz in 2019, 24 years on, the bottom line is that Egal Amir won. He achieved all his goals and more. He not only stopped the peace process, killed the man who led it and brought his rival into power, he ushered in an era that shall bear his name, the era of there's no one to talk to, nothing to talk about, and anyone who does talk will have to face the consequences. Despite Rabin's efforts, the Oslo Accords are today viewed as a distant failure. Harvey Milk was the first openly gay elected official in California history, but his political career was all too short-lived, as he was assassinated on November 27, 1978, at the age of 48. Before he moved to San Francisco in the early 1970s, he served in the United States Navy and worked as a financial analyst in New York City. In 1964, a politically conservative milk campaigned for Barry Goldwater and lived a closeted life that appeared conventional and straight-edged. In 1972, he opened a camera store in San Francisco's Castro Street, where he became well-known in the gay community. Frustrated by local tax laws, he ran for the San Francisco Board of Supervisors, coming in 10th place out of 32 with some 17,000 votes. This encouraged him to further pursue a political career, which culminated in becoming the country's first openly gay public official in 1977. Milk received many death threats during his political career, to which he reportedly replied, If a bullet should enter my brain, let that bullet destroy every closet door. 
Tragically, Milk was shot dead not by an anonymous assassin, but by Dan White, his City Hall colleague. White, who was supposedly suffering from depression, killed both Milk and San Francisco Mayor George Moscone because they refused to reinstate him as a supervisor. On May 21, 1979, White was sentenced to just eight years for manslaughter, a lenient conviction that was achieved by what has been termed the Twinkie defense. White's lawyers argued that sugary foods led to his diminished mental state. White took his own life only two years after being released from prison, at age 39. Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi was 66 when she was killed by her own bodyguards. Gandhi was the only child of Jawaharlal Nehru, India's first Prime Minister. She was 30 years old when her father assumed office in 1947, and she had an intimate role in his leadership, learning the subtle skills of international diplomacy. Following her father's death in 1964, she was appointed Minister of Information and Broadcasting. Just two years later, she became the leader of the world's largest democracy. During her first premiership from 1966 to 1977, Gandhi's tenure was marked by the Simla Agreement with Pakistan, which settled various land disputes, and a successful agricultural policy that produced surplus grain in Punjab. However, Gandhi was found guilty of authoritarian conduct in 1975, which she corroborated by imprisoning thousands of her political opponents. Gandhi lost the election in 1977 and served a jail sentence for corruption, but she then returned to the premiership in 1980. Four years later, in June 1984, she launched Operation Blue Star, which saw the Indian Army raid the Golden Temple in the city of Amritsar, which was a bulwark of six separatists. The operation is said to have killed at least 400 people. The outrage was so great that two of Gandhi's Sikh bodyguards shot and killed her on October 31st, 1984. Mrs. Gandhi has been assassinated. Legendary musician John Lennon had recently turned 40 when he was assassinated by Mark Chapman outside the Dakota building in New York City. The death of a man who sang and played the guitar overshadows the news from Poland, Iran, and Washington tonight. Unlike most of the assassins on this list, Chapman had no political motivations. In 2020, he admitted, I assassinated him because he was very, very, very famous, and that's the only reason, and I was very, 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 very much seeking self-glory. Chapman has been in prison since he killed Lennon on December 8, 1980. Psychiatrists considered the then 25-year-old Chapman to be borderline psychotic, and they recommended to the defense that he plead insanity. However, he decided otherwise, pleading guilty and admitting to using hollow-point bullets since they were deadlier. While Chapman was clearly deliberate in his killing of Lennon, he was also deeply troubled and prone to delusion. For example, he was so obsessed with the J.D. Salinger novel The Catcher in the Rye that he read it on the sidewalk after shooting the musician. Furthermore, he believed that he had killed Lennon so as to promote the novel. As he told People magazine in 1987, I went down and laid in my cell and I was thinking over why on earth would I kill anyone? What happened? What are the real reasons? And then it hit me, like a joyful thing, that I was called out for a special purpose. To promote the reading of the book. It was something that was meant to be. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about historical figures are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.